As a little girl, I remember Singapore before it became such a cityscape, where my grandmother had a hut in the forest, wells for water, and there were always dogs roaming around. As kids, we were told to stay away from the dogs, and in fact, I actually remember being quite scared of them, <laughs> because they might have rabies. Well, as a veterinarian now uh, in Australia, I've forgotten what that feels like. I mean, I think you can guess by now. Look at me. <laughs> I'm a crazy dog lady. Um, Peppy lives in my handbag, and we go to restaurants and movies together. And um, so now, I love dogs. And uh, Peppy's gonna, Peppy, you're gonna stay and watch this with me. And um, whilst we haven't got rabies here in Australia, I think the bigger reason, though, why this has blossomed is because the public health policies that we have in the developed world have worked so well. That many of us have never have had to experience watching our best friends turn into our own enemies. Well, stray dogs are the main source of rabies for developing communities, and people understandably react by killing dogs in a bid to stop it. On the island of Flores, Indonesia, in 1998, they killed 300,000 dogs in a space of four years to try to stop rabies, but only to watch it spread across the island. Four years ago. We hopped over into Bali. This bandit approach that's, so current, that's currently used in so many places in the world today still just doesn't really work, and this is why. Now, this represents the maximum number of dogs that a space can hold, and the different colours represent the dogs in the different communities. So, what happens when you kill dogs is this: you've created an empty space with food and shelter. For other dogs to roll in, and because these dogs are not dissexed, they breed. And you're back to square one, whilst rabies runs rounds in circles. In 2005, the people from the state of Sikkim in India came up to us here at Vets Beyond Borders, and they said to us, "You know what? We're sick of killing dogs. What else can we do?" So we said to them, "Well, let's turn it around. We will turn these dogs from being the enemy to being our protectors." We will use technology that's been around for decades, and we will vaccinate every single dog that we can get our hands on, owned or stray, and then we'll desex them and keep them there to stop this empty space effect. And we'll surround ourselves with a stable population of vaccinated dogs, because once we've got that, we've got this shield around us. A shield of dogs that will not only defend their territory, but we would be unlikely to pass on rabies even if they were bitten. And so now, when other dogs and other animals with rabies from the outside try to get in, they can't. It stops right where the vaccinated dogs start. Together with Foundation Bridget Bardo, we haven't had a single case of a human's rabies death reported in Sikkim for the last five years. <laughs> and the animosity towards dogs is fading. This is the idea. That we and many other aid agencies around the world is still trying to share, because only then can we not only cure rabies, stop, stop rabies, but the relationship between man and dog can begin to heal. Thank you.